What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And this is my third take of doing this video. I got my Zoom H2 in down here so you can hear my voice instead of the built-in microphone on the camera. And I keep forgetting to, at first I was like, oh, I didn't press record. And then I press it again. I was like, oh, why is it not recording? And then I was like, I didn't put an SD card in it. By the way, it's super hot up here. My basement's freezing cold. The living room's the perfect temperature. And up here, it's just super hot. I can't wait to move out of this house. It is so freaking old. Anyways, this video is going to be me talking about everything that I thought was exciting about Google I.O. 2014 and putting it together in one video. You may not have seen it. You may have been at work. You may have been at summer school. You may have been doing in a position where you could not watch it. So I want to go ahead and talk about everything I thought was most exciting. Before we begin, this video is brought to you by YouTube.com slash WWJoshDEW. These days, a lot of people are downloading and ripping off other people's videos, including my own, and then uploading them on their own channels and trying to get, you know, trying to say, hey, this is my video. Come subscribe to me. I didn't make this video. It's clearly from somebody else. And so if you see this video on someone else's channel, you know to go to YouTube.com slash WWJoshDEW and let me know someone else ripped it off and I will make sure that video is taken down. So I took a whole bunch of screen grabs. I blew up Twitter just like everybody else was. Seriously, go on Twitter, hashtag Google IO 2014. I was definitely not the only one blowing up Twitter. So uh, let's begin. Hey, all, all these are screen grabs from the actual video that was on YouTube. So um, first thing they showed off was the Android 4.5. Look at this. Um, first thing you notice is the little people icon at the top there. I'm assuming that's like a people icon to let you know, hey, Josh just signed into this phone. If it's a phone, more than most of the time, I'm assuming only one person's gonna have one device. So I'm, I'm guessing that would be beneficial on a tablet, but on a phone, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't think I'd want that taking up space in my status bar. The next thing they talked about was the fact that Android has one billion active users every 30 days. That's impressive, and that just goes to show you how much Android's been changing. My very first Android video was posted over four years ago in 2010. I got my Samsung moment around Christmas 2009. I, I was debating between getting that and the Palm Pre. My wife ended up getting the Pre, and I got the moment, and I never regretted my decision. I loved the moment. It was an awesome phone at the time. And that's when I first got into Android. Uh, uh, about middle um, of 2010, I got into rooting and installing ROMs before they were released and etc. So that's that's pretty much the story of my channel and a brief little statement there. The next thing they talked about was the Android One. This is kind of important. This phone, if I remember correctly, is supposed to be just $100. I'm used to cutting edge phones and I'm, I've been using this phone for a while and it is really good, and it costs less than $100. $100. It's gonna have a 4.5 inch screen, which I'm someone that prefers a bigger screen. I think I think this size, around five inches, is the sweet spot. So 4.5 is definitely not bad at all, especially for a $100 phone. It's gonna have an SD card slot, which is pretty awesome. Who doesn't love expanding storage? Hopefully with Android 4.5, they fix the external SD card issues they're currently having with KitKat that pretty much only root users can get around and enjoy having an SD card with KitKat. It's, it's, I hope they fix that permanently. It's gonna have dual SIMs, so meaning you could have an AT&T SIM card in it or and a T-Mobile SIM card in at the same time and you can switch between the two. So you can say like, hey, I wanna make a phone call with my T-Mobile number and then now I need to use my AT&T number, I don't know, or two T-Mobile SIM cards on two different accounts. And last but not least, it's going to feature an FM radio, which um, some people are like, why would you do that on Twitter? They were saying that. And I'm the kind of person that says, hey, why not? I mean, if you're in an area where you're not getting any signal at all, it, like cellular wise, it would be nice to still have that radio if it can, of course, pick up a signal. Then they talked about the L developer preview, and then you saw the, uh, it was a first look at the new icons that they were going to have in Android. It's like a, uh, it, it's different. I'll put a bigger one up on the screen after I edit this video. So, uh, I'm going to be able to install that on my Nexus 5 and my Nexus 7, and yes, there will be videos of that, because I cannot wait to try that out. Then they proceeded to show the new Gmail, which was pretty cool, and it was like a seamless transition between devices so like the same you'd have the same experience on all of your devices it would just benefit from having the larger screen 
And a few small changes make a really big difference. And you can also see how easy it is to take that same design to different screens. They also showed off mirroring your Android device to your Google TV, which was pretty awesome. So like in this one, he was showing a game that he was playing on his phone that was showing up on his TV. That was pretty cool. They also talked about having the same apps on your Chromebook as your phone. So if you had a, an app on your phone like Flappy Bird, you should be able to play it on your Chrome, Chromebook. And they also talked about the fact that if you got a notification saying your battery is low, your Chromebook would say, hey, your phone's battery is low. Also, if you got a call or a text message or an email or a Twitter or whatever, your Chromebook shows you the same notification that your phone's getting, but your phone's in your pocket. The next thing they talked about was something that I thought was probably one of the biggest changing things, like, like the most exciting thing about Google I.O. was this. Okay, so my HTC one I made here, press the power button, I have to put in my lock code every single time. So if I just unlocked it, read a text message, and then locked it, and it was like, oh, I just got another notification. Now I've got to unlock it, put my code in, and then like it's a repeating process of all day long entering the same code over and over and over again. But if you're like me, you want a code on your device. So if somebody, if you have your phone on a table and somebody comes along and picks it up, they won't be able to just sit there and flip through all of your emails, all of your text messages. You may have your bank account on here where you just open the app up and it, and it tells you your account balance and stuff. Um, it, it, that's all information that only you want to know. So that's why you have a lock code on your phone. And if you have an Android watch or um, there's gonna be other scenarios too. They said something about it being on a table and it's, you're gonna be able to just pick your phone up and it's gonna know, hey, you're near your watch. Your watch is a Bluetooth connection to your phone, so you don't need to enter in your lock code. That's you picking up your phone. So no lock, no lock code. Turn it on, you, have, you instantly have access. Obviously, I don't have an Android watch, so I can't show you that, but I don't have to put my code in anymore if I have my watch close to my phone. I guess the only benefit, downside of that is if you're in the house and you're like sitting at the table on, and your phone's like behind you or close enough to where, where it'll unlock without a code and your significant other or somebody's like trying to read all your stuff or your girlfriend or your brother or your mom or if someone's trying to read your stuff, they could technically unlock it without a code. So I, I, that'll be interesting to see how that works, that's for sure. Also, they showed the performance of Art for Android, like the difference between Al Dalvik, like you got Dalvik and you have Art, and Art's supposed to be faster. So they showed a demo of that. I'm not, I'm not really, you know, into all that, so I don't, I don't know. It's, it was just something. I'll. <laughs> Another really huge thing they talked about was 64-bit. You saw, you read it, you're reading that correctly. 64-bit. On Android so that's awesome you're gonna be able to have more RAM in the phone you're gonna be able to have more stuff going at one time compared to a 32-bit that'd be like trying to have a 32-bit Windows computer these days you can't have more than three gigs of RAM in it and three gigs of RAM seriously that's Windows Chrome and a few tabs and your memory is done they also showed off what you can do with the new engines and stuff and they had some unreal uh, they showed an unreal logo there and and played some games and it looked really really good uh it just gets me excited for uh the new tegra k1 or k or whatever that's going to be in the nvidia shield 2 oh fun times ahead especially for a nerd like me i don't know any of these people but i went ahead and took a screen grab just in case one of you out there knows any of those people and you're and like hey that'd be like me if i was in the crowd and someone took a screen grab it's like hey I saw you, so that's cool. Another really big thing they talked about was the evolution of Android, which I thought was pretty cool. They talked about where Android has gone in the past and where it is right now and where it's going to be in the future. So it had Android 1.0. Um, fun fact, my Samsung moment came with Android 1.5. 1.5. 
I remember trying to install Twitter and it said, sorry, you need Android 2.0 or higher. And I was like, well, well, what's Android 2.0? So I went on there and I was like, well, what do I have? Oh, I have 1.5. Well, how do I get 2.0? And that's when I very first got into rooting and installing custom ROMs and etc. On SDX developers, they posted a way to download 2.1 and manually install it on your, you know, on your, uh, moment without waiting on samsung to finally push 2.1 to the moment which i don't even know if they ever did that i don't think they pushed 2.1 to the moment i don't remember another big thing is you know how like a lot of times like your phone would have really old stuff on it and now they're doing this whole google play services thing where uh like per app for instance a really good example is the google camera app the google camera app can now update through the play store without actually waiting on like Samsung, HTC, or uh, LG to release an update to the phone to update the camera app. Now you can just do it through the Play Store. Well, they're talking about the Google Play services during the IO thing. So for some of you out there that are curious about that and know what Google Play services is and does, that's pretty awesome news right there. They also talked about the new security measures in Android. So like, you're gonna be able to, like a kill switch, you're gonna be able to manually kill your phone if you no longer have access to it or if you lost it and you don't want someone to do that. Right now there's such a thing as android.com slash device manager. Type that in your URL bar. If I have my phone on vibrate or silent and I can't find it, I immediately go to android.com slash device manager on my computer. I pick my Nexus 5 or my HTC One M8 and I press the ring button. And that way if it's like a, a black device sitting on a black shelf or a black entertainment center, or if it's in a couch, cu couch cushion, or if it's wrapped in my blanket in my bed or something, I can go on that website and have it ring my device even if it's, you know, on a vibrate or silent mode. And now they're taking it to a whole new level and you're gonna be able to do more with that technology. They also talked about something that I'm not so excited about, Knox. They talked about how Samsung's done a great job with it, and they're going to be implementing some of that into Android. Not excited about that at all. And Knox is K-N-O-X, for those of you that have no clue what I'm talking about. And then what, Next, they talked about something that's very, very exciting, Android Wear. That was about the watch with being close to your phone and etc. So they showed off the LG G Watch, which is a square display, um, or was it? The other way around. One of the phones, I believe it was the Moto 360, had a circle display. And that brings me to something I want to ask you, the person who's watching this video. Would you rather have a square watch on your wrist or a circle one? The circle one looked really cool when they had a little digital display of like, it almost looked like a real watch. Like like a, a watch with the little hands that move around. It almost looked like a real watch until he touched on the screen. And the new Android Wear sounds and look amazing. You've got color, you've got touchscreen, you've got all these things that you don't have with Pebble. Pebble, man, I canceled my Pebble order after they made me wait several months. After several months, I finally canceled my order and I'm not. I'm glad I canceled my order with Pebble because now I get to order a LG G Watch or a Moto 360. They also announced the Samsung Gear Live, which is a Samsung smartwatch, but I'm definitely more interested in LG G Watch or the Moto 360. And then they showed you what all the watch could do. You can sit there and flip through your emails. You can also like take a note because it's going to be a heavily influenced off of Google now. You can say like, have lunch with this person at this time and then it will put a note up on your phone or you can uh, even at one point they even showed a barcode that you could scan right there so like if you're somewhere where you need to scan something like hey scan this instead of handing them your phone you're like scan my wrist sounds awesome they also announced that the uh, Android Wear is going to have navigation on your wrist so you're gonna be able to actually navigate with turn-by-turn -turn directions from your wrist. So like if you're driving and you have your watch on your wrist, it's gonna say you turn left on Broad Street or something. That sounds awesome and I'm definitely looking forward to getting my first Android watch. They also showed the Circle Watch, that's what I was talking about a moment ago, and that he ordered pizza from his wrist. <laughs> That ordering pizza from your wrist, like how, seriously, I don't feel like getting up to go to my phone. Oh, I got my watch, let's order some pizza. <laughs> 
Next, they talked about something which I thought was really exciting, Android Auto. In the video, the live stream, they showed a guy taking a Nexus 5 inside a Kia and hooking it up to his Kia. Then, he was able to use navigation, get text messages, phone calls, points of interest, pretty much everything for on his phone was now in his car. And the car that they were sitting in was a Kia Soul. So if you're looking at getting something like that, the Kia Soul, man, the Kia Soul is looking more tempting now. Here's a picture of him in the car. And then he gets out the phone and connects it to the car. And then it was just, it was like, I was like a little kid on Christmas morning opening up presents. I was like, ah, I just couldn't stay still. I was so excited and tripping out and, and I just, ah, Android TV. They showed off how Search works, the Google Play Store, games. It's like the Fire TV, but it's Google. So you have the Google Play Store instead of the Amazon App Store, which the Amazon App Store on Fire TV is so limited. You, My seven-year-old can count every single app that you'll find on the Fire TV right now. That'll change in the future, I know. But Google TV, seriously... If they make that $100, I, I, I was seriously, my honest opinion, that the Fire TV killed the Ouya, much better device for streaming, playing video games, and etc. It killed the Roku, which at a $100 price point, the Fire TV does everything the Roku does, and way, way more. So I thought the Fire TV was the best little streaming device out there for 100 bucks. If they make the Android TV 100 bucks, man... Man, oh man, we're going to have to check that sucker out and do some videos with that like we did the Fire TV. He also showed that you could interact with live television, what's playing on your TV. So like while you're watching The Walking Dead, you can sit there and, and navigate around the TV, different channels, which why would you change it from The Walking Dead? Seriously, you don't change the channel when The Walking Dead's on. You just keep watching. <laughs> And so you could like navigate around and use your watch as a remote to your TV, which sounds awesome. Lazy, but awesome. <laughs> they also showed a tablet, a Samsung 12.2 inch tablet. I believe it was what it was. And they had that showing on the bigger TV also. They announced some really, really exciting things about Chromecast. Don't even get me started. I was watching the entire live stream on my Chromecast. And now the, and the Chromecast is going to be even better than it was before. You can actually mirror your phone or your tablet from your phone or your tablet to your TV using Chromecast. For instance, say you have a Note 3 or an S5 with a super high megapixel like 13 or 16 megapixel back camera. And you want to use that for taking a picture. But you're like, did I get myself in the frame? Am I fully in there? Did it? Well, you know, did it show stuff that you didn't want it to show in the background? Like, I can see exactly where the frame ends and where it's up with this camera because I have a little monitor that flips out from it. And essentially, you can open up the camera app and then have it mirror to your Chromecast so you can have the back camera, this camera right here. I could be taking a picture of my camera right here and I can look on my TV and go, yeah, that's, that's perfectly in focus. Or a better example would be if you're taking a selfie because you cannot see. It's hard to show you exactly what I'm trying to get. But hopefully you understand. You're going to be able to use the back camera. Instead of your front camera. And be able to monitor exactly what's in the frame. What's in focus. And what's not. So I'm very excited about that. They also talked about the fact that. If you go to a friend's house. And they have a Chromecast. You can actually without being on their network. So you don't have to ask them for their for their uh, network code. To like their Wi-Fi. You can stream what's on your phone to their Chromecast. So uh, you just, whenever you open up the app, you'll see at the right there that it says nearby devices. Right there, nearby devices. So you don't have to be on the same network. I wonder if, it, if, it, if it's only through Wi-Fi. Oh, wait, no, he was connected to his LTE. So they said they use a number of different technology and like methods and ways to learn that hey there is a chromecast nearby and he's not even connected to wi-fi he's on his mobile data plan which ugh. i mean if you're at a friend's house or somebody you don't have to ask them for their wi-fi code to get on their wi-fi another thing was if he had an image on his chromecast and he was like hey what is that you can actually ask google now what's on my chromecast 
and it will give you a result of what you're seeing on your Chromecast at that time. Back to what I was talking about earlier, uh, with mirroring your phone, whatever's on your phone right here, you will be able to see it on your TV without using like an MHL to HDMI adapter, um, and you don't have to have a Samsung device, and you can have a Nexus device. So that's really exciting. One of the things he showed off was he was using Google Earth. So like he was trying to show his daughter where uh, Mal something, where a country was, and instead of showing it on a little phone, he was sitting there pinching in on his phone, and his TV was showing a huge image of what was on his phone. So it works kind of like an app called AllCast, and there's another one too, but I don't remember the name of it, like Dream something. Anyways, those are apps that let you do that, but you're gonna be able to do it natively from within Android without using an app. Here was a little demonstration during the live stream that he was pointing his phone towards the audience, and here was like the TV, like the uh, Chromecast, showing him what he was seeing on the camera. Again, the, I think the biggest benefit with that is holding your phone like this and trying to make sure that you're in frame and in focus and everything. They also announced stuff about Google Drive. It's gonna be like $10 a month for unlimited storage. It says it's for work. So I don't know if it's gonna be $10 for like someone like me or for anybody that has a Google Drive account. We'll see. They talked about a Purify, some service that they acquired. And then at the end of the live stream, they announced that everybody was walking out with an LG G watch and a Samsung Gear Live. And they said, when it becomes available, they can get a uh, Moto 360. So that about wraps it up. Those were the things I was definitely like glued to the TV watching, you know, what they're talking about and, uh, you know, the most excited about, definitely. I would say the Android watch Definitely going to try to get one of those someday. The Google TV, definitely going to get one of those. Heck yeah, man. I really hope they make it $100 like the Fire TV, uh, the Roku, and all the other devices that are uh, uh, like the Apple TV. All of those things that do the same thing for 100 bucks. So hopefully the Google TV is $100. That would, that, would, that would be a game changer. And they would put the Fire TV and everything else out of business, man. Yeah, that's about all I can think of. There's definitely things I talked about at the beginning that now I've forgotten about that I was excited about, but that's just how ADHD works with you, man, or how it what it does to you. You you get squirrel. What were we talking about? <laughs> Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, as always, please do me a huge favor and give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I cannot wait to get an LG G Watch or a uh, Moto 360, uh, the Google TV, um, the, uh, sh showing off the Chromecast stuff. Um, I have a second channel where I'll probably post some of those videos too, like like little quick videos. It's youtube.com slash wwjoshdu. I have DEW, which is this channel. I have DO, which is my gaming channel. And I have DU, which is my second channel. A lot of channels, but seriously, who would want me to post a two-minute video playing Trials on this channel or post a quick vlog about something on this channel that's mostly about tech? That's why I have it that way. In the bottom of the description, there's going to be links to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, Google+, and every other social media out there, including links to my second channel and my gaming channel. This is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.